Hi, my name's Keith Cooper for North Light Images. In this video, I'm looking at the hidden secret black and white print modes of the Canon Pro 1100. Um, they are in some ways an answer to a question I've been asked a lot. Can you just print with the black and gray inks? Now, normally with black and white print modes, there is some color ink mixed in. Now I'll explain a bit more about this, what all this testing stuff here means, and why you should always remember that sometimes Canon gives with one hand and takes with another. So yes, there are black and white grayscale monochrome print modes for the 1100, but you lose stuff it flexibility and a few other areas as well. So the problem. Um, printing black and white. It's actually quite difficult for most inkjet printers to give good results for black and white printing. I cover black and white printing in every single printer review I do. These are the proper written ones. I will sometimes do videos about it as well, but certainly if you look at the main written reviews you'll find there's a section about black and white for every printer. Some are better than others. Now why not just print with black ink? or black and gray ink if the ink if the printer has it, it's because those inks themselves are not strictly neutral. Now I'm assuming that when you print black and white you're going to, we'll start off with, uh, wanting to print just black, gray, white, white of the paper. So that's it, you know, just straightforward monochrome printing. Well these test images here, and there are piles more of them up here, are using a standard test print of mine, um, freely downloadable from the North Light Images website. There are several versions of it. Uh, this particular one you can see has a bar across the top of it. That there is for reading with this, which is a scanning spectrophotometer. There's an I1 ISIS XL that I use for making printer profiles. I've created a special target for measuring black and white linearity. You'll find these little graphs appearing in many of my reviews, and they show how linear the, uh, well they show quite a few things, but they show uh, how linear the output is, going from say 0% to 100% in your grayscale image. Whether that's a colour image that you're converting to, color, to black and white is, a, is an entirely different matter. This is just looking at grayscale images, and they show how linear it is, whether there's any crunching of shadows, whether the highlights are too light or anything. Anyway, this gives a good indication of how black and white print performance will work, which is why I include it in all the different reviews. Very quick to run this, only takes a minute or two just to run this lot, get the values here, and I save the files, run, produce these little graphs. Anyway, that's just the techie side of it. And I so say, if you want to know more, have a read of the articles. I put links to the articles in the notes to the video. But what about these secret mode? Well, first of all, they are media types. If when you have the uh, Pro 1100, um, you look through the media types that you set when you load a paper into it, you will see all the usual luster, barita, fine art papers. There's no mention of grayscale. What you have to do to access the grayscale uh, media types, and there is one for art papers, which is using the matte black ink, and there's one for photo papers, which is using the photo black ink. They are photo brackets grayscale, fine art brackets grayscale, but they're not there. How do you get them? Well, this is where you have to use the Canon MCT media configuration tool bit of software. What you have to do is fire it up, you get a list of all the media available, you have to go to adding a, a, a media type from the list, so you need to select the grayscale one, you need to then add that to your list, master list, you then need to save that, download it to the printer, but of course that's downloaded it to the printer, your printer driver knows nothing of this, you then have to go to the printer driver and update the printer driver. I told you Canon take back with the other hand. So for the flexibility that you get with this black and white print mode, 
Um, you get a lot of hassle installing it. Now, I've got things about the uh, media configuration tool in my Pro 300 and my older Pro 1000 uh, articles uh, and the written reviews that I did. Um, I will include some details of it when I get around to doing the written review, but at the moment, you need to wade into the media configuration tool. Now, I'm gonna say that is a level of complexity that a significant portion of people really just don't want to go near. Nothing about making profiles or anything. Ah, profiles. You don't use ICC profiles for this. This is purely a media type. If you use Canon PPL software, the PPL software has a black and white print mode. Now the black and white print mode is excellent. It allows you to fine tune various aspects. Now there are some issues on the uh, 1100 in that if you're using anything using the uh, matte ink, the shadows have a propensity to get crunched up, but that's something I'm investigating. I'll cover otherwise. You can't use the black and white print mode with these two new media types. In fact, if you select one of these media types, it grays out the option to choose black and white print mode. So there is no fine tuning of these for different papers. There is no creating profiles to go on top of them or anything that can't do any of that. All it is, is if you select that media type, either the, and it's brackets grayscale, so it's either, you know, art paper, photo paper, that's it. No subtlety there either, no, no custom stuff there. You've got grayscale. Now, it turns out that it really does work. Uh, these are the linearity checks. One on um, Canon's Fine Art Rough paper. That's the, uh, there's another one, Fine Art Smooth, but it doesn't really matter because there's only one setting for art paper. That's art paper brackets grayscale. So you use that and I've got a set of results here from Curves for this. What does it tell me? Well, it's moderately linear. It crunches shadows up a bit. Um, whereas for most papers, I'd probably want to drop the black point from 100 to say 94. On this, you can drop it to 96 to get a nice linear thing. There's no adjustments. There's no warm, cool, anything. It's just using the inks as is. Now, I can actually see that because I've got this little microscope here. There's a USB microscope. Now, I'll have a a video shortly looking at two of these different USB microscopes um, that I was recently asked to have a look at. Um, and they are, superficially, they're identical. When you look at the images, you find that one sharpens the images an awful lot more than the other, and means that if you're looking at very fine detail, it's not necessarily that much use. Um, I suspect one may be even doing much more sampling, resampling of the image. But anyway, on this screen here, I've got bit of my test image and you can see the ink drops on it. Now magnification, magnification is quite strong here but you can see no coloured ink drops at all. If I look at the same paper but printed using the grayscale mode you can see a few coloured droplets of ink. Now both Epson and Canon in the normal black and white print mode mixes in a little bit of color to give control over the neutrality of the print. If you look at the overall neutrality of prints using this uh, new hidden mode, then you'll find in looking at it that actually the dark grays are a bit warm, the blacks seem fairly neutral, the light grays seem fairly neutral. So what it would seem is that the dark gray ink is just a little bit warm and that's showing in this. Now, can I notice it in a print? Well, no, not really, not even in this test print. If I look carefully, can I actually see this? This is measured differences. So we have a black and white print mode that you can use by just selecting one of two types, depending on your paper, you can use one of two types of media type. Very useful, prints very nicely. I'll, I'll be looking into this in some more detail, but it prints nicely, but there's no control over it. 
if you select that, it disables almost all your other adjustments. You have to use Canon Control. If I'm printing from Photoshop, I need to print, leave the printer management up to the, up to the printer. I'm sure if you select it in other print mode, it'll just do black and white output. Now, it could be a very simple way of getting moderately good to good black and white. The problem is you need to use the media configuration tool to install the two custom media types both onto your printer and onto the driver on your computer. What that means by the way is that if I do it on this and this is my uh, MacBook Pro, it's a the newish one here, I've installed it on here because I was using this for testing. This is the one you'll see in some of my videos that I've got downstairs where, where the printer is. The, the Pro 1100 is not up here in my office because it is too heavy for me to lift and carry upstairs. And that's not going to happen given it's going to be going back to Canon at some point. OK, it's set up here. If I want to use this grayscale mode from my uh, other computer, so a Mac Studio, for example, over there. I need to go into the printer driver, the printer utility, and update the list for the printer driver of what's installed on the printer. Uh, it's, uh, it's a lot of faffing about, and that is a usability fail. If you're going to have features like this, commit to them, put them in the printer menu. If you think they are so detailed that all well, people will just get confused by them, well, don't have them then. Um, it really is not that difficult to use. It feels like this has been shoehorned into the 1100 a bit. Oh, look, we can do this. Let's do this. Um, it feels more like a solution created by engineers who've gone, whoa, this is a neat trick, we'll do this, rather than thinking through the usability aspects, and in particular, its integration with something like Professional Print Lab, PPL, the free software. I suggest getting the PPL software because it's very easy to use. It works. It produces great black and white prints, as long as you, on matte papers, you're very wary of that crunching up of shadows that needs to be adjusted. But... Um, yeah, it works, but it'll be a little bit of a hassle getting there. I'm almost going to say that if you don't know how to use the media configuration tool, um, this is probably not going to be your best introduction to using it. Now, it's actually a very capable, capable bit of software because it allows you to make custom media settings. It allows you to produce media types which have, for example, different thicknesses of paper, uh, allows for just feed adjustment. Even if you're using it for creating color media types, it allows you to do things like changing ink limits. Although, remember that, one hand gives, one hand takes back. Yeah, sure, you can change your media types and things. You try finding any information on the actual details of the media or what those ink limits mean. No, you can't have that information. So, yeah, here's a feature, but you're not getting that. Um, does that irritate me? Yes, a little bit. Am I pleased it's there? Yes. But then again, I like this techie stuff. I set it aside from my actual production of prints and my photography. This is the techie bit that backs it up. Um, I don't feel you should need to know this stuff to be able to make great prints. In fact, part of my effort for doing these videos and all the stuff like this is to try and make it easier for people to produce great looking prints. Um, because when you can make great looking prints, you know you can do that, so you can concentrate on the photography. Because remember, as I've said quite often, Rubbish photos make rubbish prints, no matter how expertly they're printed. Um, you, you just need to do it. Anyway, I hope that's been of some use. Um, I will flesh this out more when I do the written review the, in the black and white section, and I'll have some more screenshots, hopefully giving a bit more of a guide of how to do it. But at the moment, just take this as flagging the existence of these two secret modes. Um, of course, I only call them secret modes because this is YouTube and that's the sort of stuff that YouTube seems to like. But um, yeah, there you go. If you've got any questions, 
let me know in the comments or email me here at North Light Images. Um, this is what people have been asking for. It's just not necessarily in the form that they were hoping for. So there you go. Thanks for watching. Bye.